push up our notes. These are the notes over section 1.3. We're going to take a look at a couple of problems and then even review a little bit some other concepts. So looking here at section 1.3, number four, it says the cost of parking in a parking garage in Chicago is represented by the equation y equals 15x plus 20, where y is the total cost in dollars and x is the time in hours. The table shows the total cost to park in a parking garage in Denver. So this is Chicago, this is Denver. Which city's parking garage charges more per hour and by how much more? After how many hours would parking in both cities cost the same? All right, so let's talk about Chicago first. Can someone interpret what this equation means if it's y equals 15x plus 20? What do you think, Madison? Great. So we know this about Chicago. So just to pull into that parking lot, it's going to start at $20 and then go up $15 per hour. Great. All right, then we have Denver. Well, Denver, they just gave us a whole bunch of data, right? So a good way to approach Denver might be to use our calculator and come up with an equation. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll review that with you. So I'm gonna get out of here by doing a second mode to quit, clearing out my screen. I'm gonna to go to stat, edit. I'm gonna go up to the very top and clear. X is my hours, two, three, four, five. Y is our cost, 43, 51, 59, and 67. I'm going to purposely make a little mistake because I want to see if some, what happens. If I just hit graph, what's going on here? What am I seeing? I see my points, which is good. What's the extra stuff I'm seeing? Right. Yes, I'm seeing the pass line. So I got to go to y equals and clear that out. I don't see that one. Graph's not bad now, but I might want to do a zoom nine to see the points even better. All right, so there's my point. Okay, so now I want to come up with my equation. So I'm going to do stat, calculate, linear regression, and I can calculate that. And here's what we get. Is it a strong correlation coefficient? Very strong. It's in fact, it's perfect. Okay, so we got that. All right, so let's see if we can answer some questions now. Which city's parking garage charges more per hour and by how much? Talk that over for a minute with your partner. Which one charges more per hour and how much more? <laughs> Samira, what'd you think? Chicago charges more per hour? Right. Everybody say that? How much more? Seven, yes. So Chicago's gonna charge $7 more per hour. Good. Which, uh, we got that, after how many hours would parking in both cities cost the same? Well, I wanna show you something here. Let's go to Y equals. We're gonna put both of these equations in. One equation for Chicago was 15X plus 20. The other one for Denver is 8 x plus 27. And I'm going to go ahead and do um, a graph. I want to see these. There's one. There's the other. That's not a great representation, is it? I'd like to see more of this graph. 
Let me show you another thing you can do that we have not talked about. And I'd like you to jot this down, window. Window is a very helpful button to use. I want you to look at this table of values and I want you to go to the window. The lowest X that I use here is two, but theoretically, how long could we be in that parking garage? We could just drive in and leave, right? Almost like zero, right? So I'm gonna make this zero for my X minimum. The X maximum we have is five, but we could stay there for a long time, right? Let's make it 12. 12 sounds good. This stands for X scale. I'm never gonna change that. The Y minimum, what's the lowest cost we have here? 43, but so I wanna go lower than that. Um, let's do 20, we gotta be lower than it. Okay, and then our highest Y value we have is 67. I'm gonna go higher than that. I'll go nine, I'll go 100. Doesn't matter as long as you're higher. And now I'm gonna hit graph. So here's my one line and here's the other line. See how it looks better now? I can see more accurately what's going on. And now I'm going to take a look at my table of values. And the question here was asking, after how many hours would parking in both cities be the same? So this is Chicago and this is Denver. How long does it take for them to be the same? Just one hour. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more little thing here, guys, that I have not shown you. Let's say I'm going back to the stack calculate, the linear regression, and I don't feel like having to type it in, okay? I want you to go to y equals and clear everything out, clear everything out under y equals. With the points that I have in there, we already have them in, I'm gonna go back to stack calculate. I'm gonna to go to linear regression. Now I'm gonna tell the calculator to store my equation for me. Okay, store it for me. Here's how I do it. Store regression equation. I have to go under vars for variables. Go to vars. We're gonna store it in for y. So we have to go over to y vars. And it's a function. Push enter, and we're gonna put it into Y1. I'll write that out for you. Vars, Y vars, function, Y sub one. Now, I don't, you don't have to do this, guys. It's just a little extra thing. Okay, let me go back. Sorry, I gotta start over. Stat, calc, linear regression, Store it where vars, y vars, function, y sub one. So now when I hit calculate, go ahead and hit calculate. Remember how we erased all the equations? But look, it put it back in there for us when it calculated it. If you want to use it, you can. It's kind of early to try to use it. But if you try it a few times on your test and feel comfortable with it, or not on your test, on your homework, then you could use it on a test. But if you don't practice it on your homework, I would not recommend trying to just jump into that, you know, when we take the test or something, but try it out. It's kind of cool. All right, so that's that. And this was after one hour same. Okay, real quick, we're not gonna do this, but if you had to find the linear regression, you would just need to write down what all these points are, right? And then just put them in and figure it out. I want to talk about the correlation coefficient. Would it be strong or weak for this one? It'd be weak, yeah. What about this one? Strong what? Yep. This one? Good. Okay. Last thing. I want to go back here and just review a couple of these. I would like for you to try just these number, this number one and number two back here from the extra practice from section 1.2. I'd like you to talk that over with your partner once you've had a minute to think about it.
I'm going to write wrong answers up here. Okay. You guys are going to tell me what's wrong with it. Just for that one. All right, number one is wrong, but I think some people might have something like this. Okay, I'm going to show you another answer that is wrong. Some of you have that. Why is that wrong? There's something that you have to have. Patty? Correct. This is the only way that makes it correct. The reason why. The definition of a translation two units to the left is that X has to get replaced with X plus two. So you could have this answer would be good. The only other answer that would be good is if you distributed this out, which I don't recommend doing, but that's the only other way you could have it if you don't have parentheses, okay? Did anyone get that right? Oh, no. Okay, a couple did. All right, good. Okay, what about this one? Six units down. This isn't as difficult. What do we do to go six units down? Subtract six. Yes, yeah, so this is what you should have here. Did some of you get that right? Okay, let's do a couple more. Let me find good ones. Okay, let's do... Seven and nine. There's the answer on seven. Did you get it? To do a vertical stretch by a factor of four. This is a term. It has to get multiplied by four. And this is our second term. It has to get multiplied by four. We don't distribute that in there because it's absolute value and absolute value is done before multiplication. So you just leave it, okay? All right, number nine, horizontal shrink by a factor of one fourth. What do we do? Replace X with the opposite of what you would think. So what do we, re we replace X with? 4X, okay? So everything stays the same, but where I have an X, I have to replace it with a 4X. This answer is good, 
I'll take it. This answer is a little better even. So this one is good. We replace the X. Anytime we replace an X, we have to use parentheses. And then we're allowed to multiply those because nothing else is happening to this. If it had been getting squared or something, I wouldn't be allowed to. But it's nothing else is happening, so I just multiply those out, and that's a good answer. Okay? All right, we're going to do one more, number 10. Try it out. Oh, no. Uh oh, I didn't see that reflection in the x axis first. Oops. Um, I could put it So, first thing we're doing is a reflection in the x axis. That's going to make this a negative at the beginning. Then we did the horizontal stretch by a factor of three. That means x gets replaced with the opposite of what we would think, one third x, and then down five. So, to correct that one, right there. How'd you do? Did you get it? Do you remember that, the one-third? That's confusing. All right. Let's a little bit of bonus learning here. Can you think of what is the, there's only one transformation we could do that would not change the y-intercept of this function. Do you know what the y-intercept is to begin with? Three. Can you think of any transformation we could do that wouldn't change that? Horizontal stretch. Hmm. Okay, but that's not truly, um, yeah, I guess you could say that. A horizontal stretch would not change it, but that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> what were you guys, what were you guys going to say over there, um, Aaron? In what? Uh, not in the x-axis, in the y-axis. That's the one I was thinking of, but you're right. Even if we do a horizontal shrink or stretch, it wouldn't change it either. Reflection and y-axis. Yeah. So if I did this, it doesn't change it really. It's the same exact equation. I should have asked the question like which will keep it the same equation because what is the absolute value of negative x? x. That's why it doesn't even change it. It's actually the exact same thing. Okay. All right, guys. Great job today. We're going to stop there.